Hello and welcome back for day 216. Today we will be reading from the apocryphal book of Judith, chapters 7 and 8, Proverbs chapter 9, verses 13 through 18, and Romans chapter 7. Judith chapter 7. The next day Holofernes commanded all his army and all his people, which were come to take his part, that they should remove their camp against Bethulia, to take aforehand the ascents of the hill country, and to make war against the children of Israel. Then their strong men removed their camps in that day, and the army of the men of war was an hundred and seventy thousand footmen, and twelve thousand horsemen, beside the baggage, and other men that were afoot among them, a very great multitude. And they camped in the valley, near unto Bethulia, by the fountain, and they spread themselves in breadth over Dothaim, even to Belmaim, and in the length from Bethulia unto Kinaman, which is over against Esdraelon. Now the children of Israel, when they saw the multitude of them, were greatly troubled, and said every one to his neighbor, Now will these men lick up the face of the earth, for neither the high mountains, nor the valleys, nor the hills, are able to bear their weight. Then every man took up his weapons of war, and when they had kindled fires upon their towers, they remained, and watched all that night. But in the second day, Holofernes brought forth all his horsemen in the sight of the children of Israel, which were in Bethulia, and viewed the passages up to the city, and came to the fountains of their waters, and took them, and set garrisons of men, of war, over them, and he himself removed toward his people. Then came unto him all the chief of the children of Esau, and all the governors of the people of Moab, and the captains of the sea coast, and said, Let our Lord now hear a word, that there be not an overthrow in thine army. For this people of the children of Israel do not trust in their spears, but in the heights of the mountains wherein they dwell, because it is not easy to come up to the tops of their mountains. Now therefore, my Lord, fight not against them in battle array, and there shall not so much as one man of thy people perish. Remain in thy camp, and keep all the men of thine army, and let thy servants get into their hands the fountain of water, which issueth forth of the foot of the mountain. For all the inhabitants of Bethulia have their water thence, so shall thirst kill them, and they shall give up their city, and we and our people shall go up to the tops of the mountains that are near, and will camp upon them, to watch that none go out of the city. So they and their wives, and their children, shall be consumed with fire, and before the sword come against them, they shall be overthrown in the streets wherein they dwell. Thus shalt thou render them an evil reward, because they rebelled, and met not thy person peaceably. And these words pleased Holofernes and all his servants, and he appointed to do as they had spoken. So the camp of the children of Ammon departed, and with them five thousand of the Assyrians. And they pitched in the valley, and took the waters, and the fountains of the waters of the children of Israel. Then the children of Esau went up with the children of Ammon, and camped in the hill country, over against Dothaim. And they sent some of them toward the south, and toward the east over against Ekrabel, which is near unto Kusi, that is upon the brook Mochmer. And the rest of the army of the Assyrians camped in the plain, and covered the face of the whole land, and their tents and carriages were pitched to a very great multitude. Then the children of Israel cried unto the Lord their God, because their heart failed, for all their enemies had compassed them round about, and there was no way to escape out from among them. Thus all the company of Aser remained about them, both their footmen, chariots, and horsemen, four and thirty days, so that all their vessels of water failed all the inhabitants of Bethulia. And the cisterns were emptied, and they had not water to drink their fill for one day, for they gave them drink by measure. Therefore their young children were out of heart, and their women and young men fainted for thirst, and fell down in the streets of the city, and by the passages of the gates, and there was no longer any strength in them. Then all the people assembled to Osius and to the chief of the city, both young men and women and children, and cried with a loud voice, and said before all the elders, God be judge between us and you, for ye have done us great injury, in that ye have not required peace of the children of Asher. For now we have no helper, but God hath sold us into their hands, that we should be thrown down before them with thirst and great destruction. Now therefore call them unto you, and deliver the whole city for a spoil 
to the people of Holofernes, and to all his army, for it is better for us to be made a spoil unto them, than to die for thirst, for we will be his servants, that our souls may live, and do not see the death of our infants before our eyes, nor our wives, nor our children, to die. We take to witness against you the heaven and the earth, and our God, and Lord of our fathers, which punisheth us according to our sins, and the sins of our fathers, that he do not according, as we have said this day. Then there was a great weeping, with one consent, in the midst of the assembly, and they cried unto the Lord God with a loud voice. Then said Osias to them, Brethren, be of good courage, let us yet endure five days, in the which space the Lord our God may turn his mercy toward us, for he will not forsake us utterly. And if these days pass, and there come no help unto us, I will do according to your word. And he dispersed the people, every one to their own charge, and they went unto the walls and towers of their city, and sent the women and children into their houses, and they were very low brought in the city. Judith chapter 8 Now at that time Judith heard thereof, which was the daughter of Merari, the son of Ox, the son of Joseph, the son of Ozel, the son of Elkiah, the son of Ananias, the son of Gedeon, the son of Rephaim, the son of Akitho, the son of Eliu, the son of Eliab, the son of Nathanael, the son of Samael, the son of Salasadal, the son of Israel. And Manassas was her husband, of her tribe and kindred, who died in the barley harvest. For as he stood overseeing them that bound sheaves in the field, the heat came upon his head, and he fell on his bed, and died in the city of Bethulia. And they buried him with his fathers in the field between Dothaim and Balamo. So Judith was a widow in her house three years and four months, and she made her a tent upon the top of her house, and put on sackcloth upon her loins, and wear her widow's apparel. And she fasted all the days of her widowhood, save the eaves of the Sabbaths, and the Sabbaths, and the eaves of the new moons, and the new moons, and the feasts, and solemn days of the house of Israel. She was also of a goodly countenance, and very beautiful to behold. And her husband Manassas had left her gold and silver, and men servants and maid servants and cattle and lands, and she remained upon them. And there was none that gave her an ill word, as she feared God greatly. Now when she heard the evil words of the people against the governor, that they fainted for lack of water, for Judith had heard all the words that Osias had spoken unto them, and that he had sworn to deliver the city unto the Assyrians after five days. Then she sent her waiting woman, that had the government of all things that she had, to call Osias and Cabris and Charmis, the ancients of the city. And they came unto her, and she said unto them, Hear me now, O ye governors of the inhabitants of Bethulia, for your words that ye have spoken before the people this day are not right, touching this oath which ye made, and pronounced between God and you, and have promised to deliver the city to our enemies, unless within these days the Lord turn to help you. And now, who are ye that have tempted God this day, and stand instead of God among the children of men? And now try the Lord Almighty, but ye shall never know anything. For ye cannot find the depth of the heart of man, neither can ye perceive the things that he thinketh. Now how can ye search out God, that hath made all these things, and know his mind, or comprehend his purpose? Nay, my brethren, provoke not the Lord our God to anger. For if he will not help us within these five days, he hath power to defend us when he will, even every day, or to destroy us before our enemies. Do not bind the counsels of the Lord our God. For God is not as man, that he may be threatened, neither is he as the Son of Man, that he should be wavering. Therefore let us wait for salvation of him, and call upon him to help us, and he will hear our voice, if it please him. For there arose none in our age. Neither is there any now in these days, neither tribe, nor family, nor people, nor city among us, which worship gods, made with hands, as hath been aforetime. For the which cause our fathers were given to the sword, and for a spoil, and had a great fall before our enemies. But we know none other god, therefore we trust that he will not despise us, nor any of our nation. For if we be taken so, all Judea shall lie waste and our sanctuary shall be spoiled, and he will require the profanation thereof at our mouth. 
and to the slaughter of our brethren, and to the captivity of the country, and to the desolation of our inheritance, will he turn upon our heads among the Gentiles, wheresoever we shall be in bondage, and we shall be an offense and a reproach to all them that possess us. For our servitude shall not be directed to favor, but to the Lord our God shall turn it to dishonor. Now therefore, O brethren, let us shew an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend on us, and the sanctuary, and the house, and the altar rest upon us. Moreover, let us give thanks to the Lord our God, which trieth us, even as he did our fathers. Remember what things he did to Abraham, and how he tried Isaac, and what happened to Jacob in Mesopotamia of Syria, when he kept the sheep of Laban his mother's brother. For he hath not tried us in the fire, as he did them, for the examination of their hearts. Neither hath he taken vengeance on us, but the Lord doth scourge them that come near unto him, to admonish them. Then said Ozias to her, All that thou hast spoken, hast thou spoken with a good heart, and there is none that may gainsay thy words. For this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested, but from the beginning of thy days all the people have known thy understanding, because the disposition of thine heart is good. But the people were very thirsty, and compelled us to do unto them as we have spoken, and to bring an oath upon ourselves, which we will not break. Therefore now pray thou for us, because thou art a godly woman, and the Lord will send us rain to fill our cisterns, and we shall faint no more. Then said Judith unto them, Hear me, and I will do a thing, which shall go throughout all generations to the children of our nation. Ye shall stand this night in the gate, and I will go forth with my waiting woman, and within the days that ye have promised to deliver the city to our enemies, the Lord will visit Israel by mine hand. But inquire not ye of mine act, for I will not declare it unto you till the things be finished that I do. Then said Ozias and the princes unto her, Go in peace, and the Lord God be before thee to take vengeance on our enemies. So they returned from the tent and went to their wards. Proverbs chapter 9 verses 13 through 18. A foolish woman is clamorous, she is simple, and knoweth nothing, for she sitteth at the door of her house, on a seat in the high places of the city, to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither, and as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant, but he knoweth not that the dead are there and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Romans chapter 7 Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just, and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, 
worketh death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do I allow not, for what I do, that do I not, but what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that, when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. That concludes our reading for the day. May the Lord bless everyone listening with strength, health, and courage today and always.